Greetings, humans. My name is Dalek Mons, and today I will be explaining the importance of the British Railways in World War II. Before we begin, a point of clarification. This documentary covers both the importance of Britain's mainline railways and the London Underground. We shall begin with the importance of the mainline railways, and therefore with the illustrated history of British steam railways by David Ross. The four railway companies operating in England at the time helped the British war effort by transporting evacuees, freight and soldiers. Evacuation began with the declaration of war in September 1939, and from the 1st to the 4th, 607,635 people, mostly children, were moved from London to countryside destinations. Children were also evacuated from other large cities, such as Glasgow and Liverpool. More followed from London when the Blitz started in late 1940. The mainline railways were also used as a primary means of transporting military-related freight, such as weapons, gunpowder, rubble from Blitz London, which was used to build new air facilities in East Anglia, and even the frames for two enormous generators from Newcastle to Birmingham. Troops were also moved up and down the country by rail, in June 1940, the evacuation of 319,056 British and French personnel from Dunkirk required 186 10-coach trains. More trains also came from Scotland and Wales, bringing troops to England where they were needed. Now we will focus on the importance of the London Underground and the history of the London Underground DVD, a very imaginative title. During the Blitz from 7th of September 1940 to 24th of August 1941, the Luftwaffe bombed London 71 times. 79 tube stations were used as air raid shelters during this time, accommodating 130,000 people. London Transport established a canteen service to cater for those sheltering there. There were canteens on the platforms and two canteen trains per night. East of the city centre, the section of the central line between Newbury Park and Leytonston was still under construction when war was declared. No track had been laid in the tunnels, which were instead turned into munitions factories. 17,000 women took on jobs here, creating a thriving industry, producing the armaments used by the Allied forces. One tube station played a very significant role in World War II. Down Street Station is located between Green Park and Hyde Park Corner on the Piccadilly Line. It was closed to passengers on 21st of May 1932, but when war broke out, it became the headquarters of the Railway Executive Committee. Prime Minister Winston Churchill and his War Cabinet also used the station for their meetings until 1942, when the War Cabinet rooms at Whitehall were completed. Churchill referred to the station as the Barn. The Tube, however, was not immune to bomb attacks. One of the worst was at Balham in 1940, when a German bomb burst a water main and flooded the station, drowning 68 people who were sheltering there. Another incident at Bank Station killed 56 people when a bomb penetrated the ticket office roof and exploded halfway down the escalator shaft. Finally, we have a photograph of a section of the Elgin Marbles being wheeled out of Aldwych Station on its way back to the British Museum. As well as being used as air raid shelters, underground stations were also used to store valuable art and artefacts. Art from the Tate Gallery was also stored at Piccadilly Circus. Despite bomb attacks like the ones mentioned at Ballum and Bank, the underground was considered a safe place to store Britain's valuable art treasures. As I have explained, Britain's railways played important roles in the British war effort in World War II, but Always remember, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Always remember this 
or you will be exterminated. Obey! Obey! Bye.